The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Feeling low. Feeling tense. These eight words are common sense. Smoke a lucky. To be your level best. Smoke a lucky. To be your level best. Your level best. That's just how you'll feel when you light up a lucky, because... Lucky's fine tobacco picks you up when you're low, calms you down when you're tense, puts you on the right level to feel and do your level best. It's important to know that fine tobacco can do this for you. And LSMFT, LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, smooth, mild, thoroughly enjoyable tobacco. So next time you buy cigarettes, remember, Lucky's fine tobacco picks you up when you're low, calms you down when you're tense. Put you on the lucky level where you feel your best and do your best. Yes, smoke a lucky to feel your level best. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Don Wilson, and yours truly, Dennis Day. open the program this week because last week Mr. Benny locked Don Wilson in the den and won't let him out till he signs his new contract. So let's go out to Jack Benny's house in Beverly Hills where we... Wait a minute. Who's that coming up the walk? Gee, it's me. <laughs> hello, Rochester. Oh, hello, Mr. Day. Come on in. Thanks. Say, Rochester, is Don Wilson still locked in the den? Yeah, Mr. Benny won't let him out till he signs the contract. Gee, I'll never forget the time I wouldn't sign my contract and he locked me in a room for almost two years. He did? Yeah, then he went around telling everybody I was in the Navy. <laughs> oh, well, how'd you finally escape from the room? Who got you out? MacArthur. <laughs> Well, I'll tell Mr. Benny you're here. He's in the den talking to Mr. Wilson. What is it, Rochester? Dennis Day is here. Uh, tell him to wait. I'll be out in a minute. Now, look, Don. Don, we've gone over this contract <laughs> ten times a day for a whole week, and still you won't sign it. Now, what is it you want? Water. Water. <laughs> Give me a glass of water. I'm so thirsty. Then why are you stubborn? All you have to do is sign the contract. But no, you just stand there with your back to me. Now, Don, turn around. I want you to face me. Sure. You know that when I look into your big blue eyes, I'm like putty in your hands. <laughs> now, that's ridiculous, Don. What would I do with 290 pounds of putty? <laughs> But, Jack, I don't weigh 290 pounds anymore. You starved me for a week. Say, Don, you do look as though you lost weight. Why don't you weigh yourself? I can't. I put my last penny in your peanut machine. <laughs> oh. That salt is murder. Water! 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 You'll get it as soon as you sign the contract. I'll see you later. But, Jack, I haven't been on the program for two weeks. What are you going to tell the sponsor? I've already told him, Don, and he's very happy. He thinks you're in Kentucky picking tobacco. <laughs> Did he believe it? He must have. He sent you an old straw hat. <laughs> I'll see you later, Don. What a stubborn guy. Oh, well. Feeling low, feeling tense. These eight words are common sense. Smoke a love <laughs> To feel your level best <laughs> Smoker Oh, hello, Dennis Goodbye Goodbye? What do you mean, goodbye? When you came in singing, I thought I was out of a job <laughs> Now, that's silly, Dennis You and I work so well together Why, I wouldn't have such a good program without you Well, that's funny I have a wonderful program without you <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess you're right <laughs> And you know, Dennis... Oh, boss, boss! What is it, Rochester? It's Polly again. Her cold seems to be getting worse. Oh, my poor parrot. 
Rochester, didn't you do anything for her? Yeah, all morning I've been giving her four-way coal tablets. What happened? She laid a square egg. <laughs> How could she do that? It wasn't easy. <laughs> well, let's go in and take a look at her. Hello, Polly. Polly got a cold. Polly got a cold. <laughs> Poor Polly. Uh, Polly want a cracker? Polly want to die. <laughs> uh, a gesund. Gesund? Yeah, we don't mention height in this house. <laughs> Poor Polly has such a bad cold. <laughs> Polly, not with my tie. <laughs> Rochester, I think I'll rub some camphorated oil on her chest. If you want to do that, boss, you'll have to take off her mustard plaster first. Oh, yes. Come here, Polly. Daddy wants to take that mustard plaster off your chest. Hold still. <laughs> Hold still. <laughs> now, don't be nervous. <laughs> Now, Polly, stop carrying on. Daddy didn't hurt you. I think you did, Mr. Benny. Look at all those feathers stuck to the mustard plaster. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, Polly. I didn't know your feathers would stick to it. I'll get it, Rochester. Feeling low, feeling low. Oh, hello, Mary. Come on in. Oh, I'm sorry, Jack. You getting dressed to go out? No, why? You've got your toupee in your hand. <laughs> That's a mustard plaster. <laughs> Polly's feathers are stuck on it. Well, it looks better than the thing you wore last night. Last night? What a toupee. The part went from ear to ear. Mary, it just happened that someone yelled, Hey, Jack, and I turned my head too fast. <laughs> <laughs> now, come on in. Say, Jack. What? I just talked to my sister Babe over the phone and she feels awful. She's heartbroken. Your sister Babe? Why? Tyrone Power got married. Well, what's she heartbroken about? Your sister Babe doesn't even know Tyrone Power. Well, that's why she's so upset. For two years, she's been writing him love letters signed Linda Christian and look what happened. <laughs> well, your sister ought to get wise to herself. I remember the time she wrote a letter to Artie Shaw and it wasn't even her turn yet. <laughs> What a girl. Well, Jack, you can't blame Babe. After all, she's not getting any younger, and she'd like to get married. I know. But... And she's really trying. She's been going to a beauty parlor every day for the past month. Well, is it doing any good? I don't think so. <laughs> Yesterday, when she was out in the snow, a plane flew over and dropped her a bale of hay. <laughs> <laughs> a good old Babe. I knew she could get it. <laughs> Say, Mary, let's go into the library. I want to see how Polly's getting along. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mary. Dennis, where's Polly? She's up on the chandelier. What? Ah, my son, my son. Oh, for... Polly, get off of there. That's a light bulb. <laughs> Imagine trying to hatch a light bulb. <laughs> Polly, didn't your mother ever tell you about the people and the bees? Now, come down to Daddy and stop flying around. What you need is rest. Get back in your cage and go to sleep. You want me to sing to her, Mr. Benny? Sing to her? Yeah, I just recorded a lullaby for RCA Victor, and I thought you and Polly might like to hear it. Oh, yes, yes. Well, go ahead, kid. Go ahead.
shadows creep. Dreamland is not very far. Tara, Tara, Just like the angel you are. Rock a bye, baby. and go back to sleep. Dennis, that was a wonderful song and you sang it beautifully. Oh, stop repeating yourself. <laughs> what? You said the same thing to Kenny Baker 12 years ago. <laughs> well, look, if you don't want me to compliment you anymore, why just... Mary, answer the phone, will you? Okay. Hello, Mr. Benny's residence. Mary, the upstairs maid speaking. Mary. Who's calling, please? Hiya, Livy. You one little warm spot that's left <laughs> in California. <laughs> oh, hello, Phil. When did you get back from Washington? Holy smoke, is that where I was? Phil, you know where you were. Yeah, yeah. Hey, let me talk to Jeannie with the light green money. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, it's Phil. He wants to talk to you. Oh. Oh, hello, Phil. When'd you get back? I blew into town Friday. What train? No train, just blew in. <laughs> now, it hasn't been that windy. <laughs> Say, Phil. <laughs> Phil, how'd you enjoy yourself at the inaugural ball? Oh, I had a wonderful time. Say, Jackson, did you see the picture in the paper of Alice with President Truman? Yes, yes, I did. Why didn't the president pose with you? I'm from the South, son. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but the inaugural ball was great, Jackson. You know, it's amazing how them dignified senators and congressmen let themselves go at a dance. They do the latest steps. I even saw Senator Pepper doing the rumba. The rumba? Yeah, you know that Pepper ain't a bad shaker. <laughs> oh, 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 Harris, your wit is exceeded only by your natural beauty. <laughs> beauty? Phil. Phil. Buttons and booze. <laughs> what else? What else did you do on the trip? What else? Didn't you hear me? I was on Fred Allen's program. No, I. Wait a minute, Phil. You you were on Fred Allen's program? Yeah. Well, you and Fred should make a wonderful combination: ham hocks and vinegar puss. <laughs> Brother, what a dull time you must have All had. right, hold it, Jackson. Calm down, Dad. <laughs> Wait a minute. That Allen's a pretty clever comedian. He gets big laughs. Well, it's easy to get laughs if you do what he does. He tells a joke, lifts up the bag under his right eye, and there's a life-size picture of Milton Berle. <laughs> Look, Phil, outside of appearing with radio's only sponsored post-nasal drip, how did you enjoy New York? Oh, it was exciting. And Jackson... You should have seen Manhattan. It's amazing. Why? They got snow just like here. <laughs> I know, Phil, I know. We ship our big flakes east. <laughs> each, uh, each one is stamped sun-kissed on there. <laughs> Incidentally, Phil, my picture opened in New York yesterday. Did you see the ads for it? It's called The Lucky Stiff. It's a comedy mystery. The Lucky Stiff? Are huh? you in it? No, no, it stars Dorothy L'Amour, Brian Dunleavy, and Claire Trevor. I happen to be the producer. I'm the one who put up the money. You put up the what? The money. Now, Phil. Phil. <laughs> Phil. Hello? Who are you? I'm the bartender in this joint. Your friend fainted. <laughs> Oh, that's a shame. If you like. 
I'll talk to you until the nickel is used up. <laughs> Never mind. He called me. Goodbye. What a fun... Say, Mary. Mary, I've got to go to a meeting pretty soon, a very important meeting, so why don't you... Uh-oh. I guess Don Wilson wants me. Jack, for heaven's sake, have you still got Don locked in the den? Mary, it's his own fault. All he has to do is sign the contract, and he's a free man. Now, isn't that simple? Yes, Warden. <laughs> Never mind. Gee, Mr. Benny, why don't you let him out? I'm not going to let him out until he signs the contract. And that reminds me, Dennis. What? In a couple of weeks, uh, you come up for a new contract. Anchors away, my boys, <laughs> anchors away. Dennis. Farewell to college, joys we sail at break of day. Dennis, that's enough. <laughs> and don't be funny. Well, I got to run along now. Why, what's your hurry? Well, I've got to go to Wilshire Boulevard and get on a bus and ride a block, and then I get on another bus and ride a block, and then I get on another bus and ride a block, and then I get on another bus and... Wait a minute. Why do you have to get on all those buses? Well, yesterday I left my hat on one of them. <laughs> oh. Well, bon voyage. What a kid. Say, Mary, uh, I've got to go to the meeting now. Okay, I'll walk as far as the corner with you. Oh, Rochester! Yes, boss? Uh, I'm going to my meeting now, and I may not be home for dinner. Well, boss, as long as you're going to be out, can I have the night off? But, Rochester, who's going to stay with Polly? Polly Smiley, I got a date! <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, a new girl, eh? Yeah, and say, boss, could you advance me, say, about $50? $50? $50? Who do you think I am, Rockefeller or Vanderbilt? No, but she thinks I'm Amos or Andy. <laughs> well, here's five bucks and tell her you're the kingfish. <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's go. Gee, you know, Mary, the, gee, the weather's getting warmer out. Yeah. Feeling low, feeling tense. These eight words are common sense. Smoke a lucky. To feel your levivivivival bell. <laughs> Gee, that, that song is catching on fast, isn't it? It just came out and I heard it on the hit parade already. I know. Frankie sends me. <laughs> you know, Mary, sometimes. Say, I... Jack, look who's coming down the street. Where? Oh, yeah. Hello, Mr. Benny. <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Kitzel. Say, uh, Mr. Kitzel, tell me, are you... Gee, he didn't stop. I guess he didn't have anything funny to say this week. <laughs> Could be. Well, I better leave you here on the corner, Mary. I'm afraid I'm late for my meeting. Oh, that's all right, Jack. I'm in a hurry myself. I've got to rush over to the May Company. Oh, clearance sale? No, class reunion. <laughs> class reunion? Uh-huh. Look at my badge. Mary Livingston, class of 33, stockings cum laude. Oh, well, enjoy yourself, Mary. And if you have time, come over tomorrow, and then we'll Jack, look out. That bus is pulling up to the curb. Oh. Hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, Dennis. By the way, I meant to tell oh, you... Oh, I haven't got time now. I've got to catch another bus. Well, I hope you find your hat. See you tomorrow, Mary. <laughs> The weekly meeting of the Beverly Hills Beavers is now in session. Just a second, Mr. President. You can't call the meeting. One of our members isn't here yet. Which one? Mr. Benny. He'll be here soon, Mr. President. When I came in, I saw him standing on the corner. He was talking to a girl. A girl? What's her name? I don't know, but... <laughs> <laughs> Joey, stop that. Remember, you're only nine. Mr. President, I make a motion that Mr. Benny be fined for being late to the meeting. After all, what's more important, meetings or girls? Yeah. Well, Butch, when you're our age, meetings are more important. Then when you get a little older, girls are more important. And when you're Mr. Benny's age again, it's back to the meetings. <laughs> Joey, stop talking unless you get the floor. I'm sorry, Stevie. Mr. President to you. Well, how about it, Mr. President? Let's find Mr. Benny. But you can't punish a man like Mr. Benny by finding him. Money means nothing to him. It doesn't? No. You're new in this neighborhood, ain't you, bub? <laughs> Benny is one of the most generous men I've ever met. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry I'm late. Hello, 
Hello, Hello, Mr. Mr. Benny. Hello, fellow beavers. You know, a funny thing happened to me on the way to the meeting. A panhandler stopped me and asked me for a bite. So you bit him. Now let's get on with the meeting. <laughs> Did I, uh, did I tell you that one before? Every week. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Now that we're all here, let's get on with the business of the day. The purpose of our meeting today is to elect a treasurer for our club. We have two worthy candidates, and we shall now hear the first of them speak. Go ahead, Joey. <clears throat> Mr. President and fellow beavers, I think I am worthy of being the treasurer of this club because I've been a member of the club for three years... I'm a hard worker, and I've never been elected to nothing. <laughs> if I am elected treasurer of the Beavers, the money will be safe with me because I'm only nine years old and I don't go out with dames. <laughs> and another reason the money will be safe is because I don't like expensive things like ice cream sodas or chocolate bars. I'm a jelly bean man myself. <laughs> and you all know that jelly beans are ten for a penny. I thank you. Hear, hear! That's a very good speech, Joey. And now we will hear from the member who is running for re-election. <clears throat> <laughs> Mr. President and fellow beavers. <laughs> I have been your treasurer for a year now and have served you faithfully and well. I've invested your money wisely in an effort to curb inflation and bring down the high cost of jelly beans. <laughs> These past few months, I've been working on a big deal in your behalf, which I've finally con... con... Consummated. Consummated. <laughs> and now, it's my pleasure to tell you that the Beverly Hills Beavers own 10% of the Coca-Cola machine in the CBS lobby. <laughs> I should like to ask my worthy opponent to give us a financial statement of the past year. I'll be glad to. I have it right here in this notebook. <clears throat> Treasurer's report of the Beavers. Dues collected in past year, $15.60. Fines collected, 30 cents. Grand total, $15.80. That's 90 cents. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Now, if it pleases our honorable secretary, I wish he would read the list of expenditures. Yes, sir. Expenditures for 1948. Ten cents for comic book when Joey Clark was sick. Ten cents for comic book when Stevie Kent was sick. Three dollars for plasma when Jackie Benny was sick. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Well, if there's no further discussion, we'll hold the election right now. All those in favor of Joey for treasurer, raise their hands. Now, let's see. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, all those voting for Mr. Benny for treasurer, raise their hands. One, two, three... Mr. Benny, you're only supposed to raise one hand. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry, really. Did I raise two hands? Three. One had a shoe on it. <laughs> Oh, I, I was a little over-enthusiastic. Now let's see those hands in favor of Mr. Benny. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Mr. Benny wins! Hooray! 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 Mr. President, I make a motion we show our good feeling towards each other by singing our club song. I second the motion. All right, let's sing. One, two, three... For we are jolly good beavers, for we are jolly good beavers, for we are jolly good beavers, and we own a coke machine. Yes, sir. Feeling low, feeling tense. These eight words make common sense. The smoke and the tea to feel your level best. Well, I'm sure glad I was elected treasurer again. That Joey didn't have a chance. Well, I'm home in time for dinner. Now, where's my key? Oh, darn it, I dropped a quarter. 
Now, where did it... How do you like that? It rolled down a crack in the cement. I wonder if I can get it. <clears throat> no, it's too far down. Well, I know what to do. This is what I want. <laughs> now, which crack did that quarter fall into? Oh, here it is. That'll do it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the nation's fight against infantile paralysis continues relentlessly. But your contributions must keep rolling in to continue this fight. So please send your dimes and dollars to the March of Dimes. Let's all join in the fight against polio by contributing to the March of Dimes. Thank you. I'll be back in just a moment, but voice. Smoke a lucky to be your level best. Smoke a lucky to be your level best. You see, Lucky's fine tobacco picks you up when you're low calms you down when you're tense. It's good to know that fine tobacco can do this for you. And that's why it's so important that you select and smoke the cigarette of fine tobacco Lucky Strike. For as every smoker knows... L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Remember, Luckies are the overwhelming choice of the independent experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen who can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. So when you choose your cigarette, remember that Lucky's fine tobacco puts you on the right level, the lucky level, where you feel your best and do your best. Feeling low. Feeling tense. These eight words are common sense. Smoke a Lucky to be your level best. Smoke a Lucky to be your level best. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be with you again next Sunday at the same time, same station. And we're going to have a very unusual program with Claudette Colbert and Vincent Price as our special guests. Gee, what that's going to cost. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Who's laughing? I'm hysterical. <laughs> Good night. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.